You're listening to Feel Good Astrology with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request a reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com. Hey there, welcome back. It's Louisa Tanner Munson from Feel Good Astrology, and I'm here to talk about April. So, <laughs> amazingly, we're heading into our fourth month of 2023, and this is just a really sort of quick update. I'm going to look at it on a week by week basis. Um, and share just my sort of immediate thoughts. Um, if you're new to this channel, welcome, and I hope you find this useful. If you do, please do feel free to subscribe. Um, and also um, watch out for some of the other stuff. In the near future, I'm going to be recording um, the five-minute forecast for April for every sign. And I'm also going to do a little bit of a millennial special on Pluto and Saturn. So Pluto's just changed into the sign of Aquarius last week. Um, and in March, early March, Saturn changed into the sign of Pisces. Now, the millennials, as I see it, are going to be the ones that are mostly affected in their working lives, um, in their professional lives, given that Pluto is in the sign of Aquarius for the next 20 years. So I'm going to be doing a bit of an expose on that just for the millennials and breaking down that um, that 15 year span into three groups. Um, so it will be really, really tied into the millennial um, situation. Anyway, let's um, let's crack on and have a look at these weeks then. So week one then of April, and um, we've got Mercury coming out of Aries and going into the sign of Taurus. Now I'm quite excited by this because I, I see this as really helping us get a grounding. We've really been in a bit of an Aryan state of mind um, with Mercury and the Sun um, connecting in with um, Chiron and Jupiter. Um, and so this is going to give us a bit more, um, I would say, stability in the way we're thinking. Of course, um, a little way in, in week three of um, April, Mercury will start to go retrograde. Um, however, we've got a couple of weeks of clear thinking. And in fact, like thinking where we're able to start building, start building back these ideas of who we are and getting our resources um, absolutely um, as we want them to be. One thing I would um, really highlight is the need for us to get our money situation sorted. Like Mercury, when it goes retrograde, it is going to be going retrograde on um, Uranus. Um, and if you've seen any of my Uranus videos, you'll know that Uranus in Taurus is very much about money being reevaluated and changed. Um, you know, in, in my previous videos, I've spoken about how it links into patterns of the depression from the early uh, 20th century. And um, I do think we're going to start to think of our resources and our finances in a very different way. I, I think money is changing quite um, quite catastrophically almost. So this is this is an interesting time. I do think the the markets are going to be quite unstable for quite some time. So just use the first two weeks of April really to get as clear as you can be about your resources. If you can't get clear about money, and I guess none of us really can because if we've got our money in the banks and all of a sudden one market goes, it's, it's like a domino effect. But one thing we can do is make sure that we've got all our other resources in place. So I really would urge people to do that. On the fourth, we've got this um, opposition between the moon and Neptune. That's likely to bring up quite a few doubts um, and make people hypervigilant, hypersensitive, hyperpsychic, um, you know, according to how you feel, I guess. The moon will be at that point in the sign of Virgo. Um, and the moon in Virgo does tend to get a little bit over the top in thinking a little bit, um, what's the word? Um, can't think right off the top of my head, but it's, they, they get a little bit, oh, hypochondria. <laughs> no offense to anyone with moon and Virgo, by the way. Um, but there is that feeling of, you know, extra worry. Um, they are real warriors as opposed to emotional warriors. Uh, so you want to see how you can get out of the worrying and into being, you know, a warrior in your own self, like being so clear and so bold and so courageous that you know who you are. So it's, it's, you know, if you, if you have a disposition where you doubt yourself a lot, um, on the fourth, you need to really use, um, as much mental control as you, as you can. Now on the sixth, we've got the full moon. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, let me just whiz over to the, um, oh, sorry, that's the, yeah, the full moon that we're looking at on the 6th. Now, what, um, I've set this, um, according to London, which is the midpoint, um, and this is Western, 
astrology, uh, Western tropical astrology. Now, the full moon you'll see is at 16, um, 16 degrees 7 in the sign of Libra. There's the moon and there's the sun in complete opposition. Um, there's, the sun is in in between Chiron to do with our, our wounds, but also the mastery that we might need to come out of our wounds. And then you've got Jupiter, which exacerbates all of that and makes us really keen as mustard um, in the sign of Aries. Things move very fast um, where Jupiter is. So you've got the sun in a very, very sensitive place where it's um, really wanting to push on, really to attain some kind of mastery. It's meeting pain, wounding, anger, it's meeting it all head on. And then the moon is in opposition to it. Now that is going to be quite a ragey old day. Um, <laughs> now, if, if you've got a lot of um, cardinal signs um, in your birth chart, like a lot of stuff in Aries or Libra or even um, Capricorn here and Cancer down here, this is going to be quite an energizing day. And it's going to be a day that really kicks off a lot of um, possibly forward momentum, um, but it could just blow some old pattern out of the water. You know, it just like blow it apart. Now, sometimes, you know, I guess you could call that a creative shit show and that could actually be very useful. I guess a lot of it depends on how much of an appetite you have to unpick a mess after it occurs. My advice is if you're ready to really look at yourself and ready to um, explore, expand, and then... Um, really um make good with something i would i would actually avoid any kind of conflict <laughs> but if you're up for it and if you if you feel like you're capable enough of handling conflict as it occurs then i think this could be a very deeply clearing day um but just to be on the safe side just be aware that not everyone that you encounter on this day who are also under the same energies of the full moon um they may not be ready to deal with something so um i would say pick your fights <laughs> Week two then, let's have a look at week two. And there are some changes. Week two is much easier. I would say week two and week four are the easiest um, weeks of April. In week two, on the 11th, we've got Venus moving from the sign of Taurus into the sign of Gemini. Um, Venus is obviously very happy in the sign of Taurus. She rules, she's, you know, like um, she's the ruler of Taurus. Um, and, and so that sensuousness that we've been in um, is being exchanged almost for a more lively love, a more poppy and like everything's poppy and fizzy and colorful and, and fun. You know, Venus and Gemini is very light, very lighthearted. You know, she's wanting all of her connections to be lighthearted and fun. So this is a time to meet up and gather with people. Um, a lot of the pressure that we've been feeling seems to just miraculously just disappear. Now on the 14th, the 14th is a, a bit of a difficult day in spite of that. On the 14th, Venus is actually going to be in a square to um, Saturn and anyone that's born with Venus in a square to Saturn, myself included, um, will understand that the tensions can lead us to feel a little bit self, um, self-critical, um, very much into self-judgment. You might also feel a little bit alone, like you don't quite fit in. Um, and in particular, these are falling into the signs of Gemini and Pisces. Now they're mutable signs and, and the mutable signs really don't tend to have a great feeling in terms of um, their security. You know, people with a lot of mutability in their charts tend to feel like things could change and they're not really building on solid ground. So this is a, this is a day when people's egos um, and, and their sensitivity and feeling of uncertainty can be really highlighted. If that's you, if that sounds like something that you're going through, then again, this is a time to um, take time out for yourself, do things that help to nourish and build you up. Don't do anything that's going to be a high risk strategy that might knock you down. Um, in particular, don't mix with people that you don't feel really confident and loved and adored by. Um, something else happening on the 14th as well is that we've got Venus, uh, sorry, we've got the moon in a conjunction with Pluto. Now that will really ramp up the feelings of, um, of, um, power and uh, potential control issues. So you may well find like with those two things mixed together, you may find yourself um, in a situation where you feel like you're on shaky ground and are trying to control things. But if you remember, everyone you encounter is going to be um, similarly experiencing the the energy of the, the planets. So yeah, week two is interesting, but the 14th is in particular a quite a difficult day. Um, week three then, and um, once again, we've got quite a big one. We've got 
a couple of days that are really, really intense, and that's the 20th and 21st. They're the ones I want to highlight with you right now. Let me just uh, go on to, yeah, April the 20th. We've got our uh, new moon. It's the second new moon in Taurus. Um, uh, sorry, the second new moon that we've got in Aries this year. Um, so the first one was right at the start of Aries. And because of the, um, you know, how long it takes um, for the moon to go through one sign, we've got, a, you know, another new moon in the sign of Aries right at the tail end of it. Um, and this is also a total solar eclipse. And so it is a very, very powerful and very potent day. Anything that you already started at the last new moon in terms of new starts, getting things off the ground and feeling quite enterprising, you've got a second shot at it. Now, this one is 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 pretty big. Um, it's right before um, Mercury goes retrograde <laughs> the day after. Um, and the sun and moon both change signs also on the same day. So this is a pretty intense day. Lots and lots of changes and shifts. So on the 20th then, we've got this new moon at 29 degrees 50 in the sign of Aries. Um, it's in a conjunction with Jupiter. So um, the energy of the new moon is absolutely sort of amplified by Jupiter. So it's great for good luck. It's great for honors. It's great for um, feeling like you're hopeful and optimistic. You know, it's great for feeling like um, this is all happening at a lucky time. So the 20th does feel like a very sort of big, big day. Um, it's also in a conjunction with Vesta and Vesta is all about truth and harmony and getting things right. It's also um, in a conjunction with the North Node, as it would be given that it's um, coinciding with an eclipse. Um, but it, it feels like there is something on a very sort of karmic and big grand scale going on. So whatever's going on, it's, it's not really just happening to you. It's happening to everyone. It's like the world is going through a big change. And you might feel that energy already. Um, I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure that most people listening to this will already feel that there are massive changes going on here right now. Um, the very next day then, we've got um, Mercury going retrograde. Now, if you see Mercury's here at 15 degrees, um, it's in a conjunction with Uranus. So as Mercury goes retrograde, it's quite... All of the hallmarks of Uranus um, is about change, shocks, um, massive cataclysms, um, and given that Mercury and Uranus are in the sign of Taurus, which is associated with resources and money, the financial systems, it really wouldn't surprise me if something suddenly whew, reverses <laughs> and goes like either really quickly up or really quickly down. But it's, it, you know, I think there's going to be a, a, a bit of a shoot. Um, also, as Mercury goes retrograde, um, the moon is already um, very, very close <laughs> to Mercury. So it's like there's this conjunction between the moon, Mercury and Uranus at the same time, um, literally just after an eclipse. So I think the um, 20th to 21st is is pretty big. It's a pretty big, um, uh, um, I, I guess, dynamic is, is the right word. Now, Mercury is going to be retrograde until the 15th of May when it goes direct again at five degrees in the sign of Taurus. If you've got anything between, say, four degrees and 16 degrees in the sign of Taurus, this is so going to affect you. Um, also, if you've got your angles there, if you've got like an ascendant or a descendant, IC or MC, like midheaven, um, over um, the fixed signs like Scorpio, Taurus, we've also got Libra, we've also got Aquarius. If you've got anything over your angles, this is also likely to have quite a dramatic effect on you. Um, so it goes direct on the 15th of May and it's out of its retrograde shadow by the 1st of June. So it feels like all thinking things are coming back. Now I would say Mercury retrograde, I don't seem to sweat too much at, you know, people say, oh, you mustn't travel, you mustn't do this, you mustn't do that. What I would say is allow more time when you're traveling. Um, you know, don't necessarily sign things without checking all the details. But I actually think Mercury retrograde usually is, is quite a useful tool. Um, it's a time for us to re-envision. It's a time to get, um, like to reimagine, to repurpose, to reinvestigate. It's a time to just put on the brakes a little bit and just take ourselves back just to rewind and see that we are on the right track or not. And I always think those kinds of revisions um, are very, very useful. Anyway, last week, week four, um, I would say um, we've got 
The 23rd, we've got a lovely um, conjunction between um, the moon and Venus. It's, you know, it's in the sign of Gemini. It's a lovely lighthearted day. So make the most of that. Um, on the 26th to 27th of April in particular, there's quite um, a seriousness, I would say. And these are just moon um, influences, but the moon is going into a conjunction with Mars in the sign of Cancer. Um and so that's likely to fire us up and make us quite defensive. Mars in the sign of cancer is really defensive um, and very, very protective. Um, you know, it really, really fights. Actually quite dirty, I would say, because um, it, it, it always confuses its fights with I'm fighting to protect my kingdom, my family, my home. You know, they um, when Mars is in the sign of cancer, it really adds in a lot of moral relevancy that may or may not actually exist. Um, so things could get quite fiery. And then the very next day, we've got um, the moon in opposition to Pluto. Um, so the moon is in the sign of Leo and um, um, obviously Pluto's in the sign of Aquarius. And that is likely to really... Um, I don't know, add to the amplification from the day before where anger grows and people are very, very snappy. So just watch out for those days. Anyway, that's um, a quick look at um, the month of April. If you find this useful um, and you would like to help me determine what kind of material I do going forward, then please do feel free to sign or oh, go into my survey. There's a survey just down below. You'll see the link. Um, if you participate in the survey and just give me a few ideas as to what content you'd like to see on this site, I'll give you 20% discount on your reading with me. So if you are interested in a reading and you want to save a bit of cash, please do consider having a look at the survey. Anyway, that's enough from me. Check out my longer version, uh, which is a chat with my good friend, Helen Nachintu, who's also a health advisor, natural health advisor. And you can see how um, the four weeks blend in with health and healing too. So you can have a look at that. And also you got your five minute forecast. So thanks once again, take care and speak to you real soon. Bye for now. To request a reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com.